Hello, Foucher, and welcome all to my Patreon so far. Thank you, my love, my goes out to you, and thank you for supporting me. Um, so, as you all know, my first proper video, well, this is the first introduction video, I will do a sort of uh, workshop video on how to securely and aesthetically make an antler top stand or staff. And for those that uh, sort of saw my previous post on um, Robert Cochran's um, ideas of the stang, um, you already know um, through the pictures and the symbology that the stang is probably is is probably changed and um, evolved as what people see the stang today. But in Robert Cochran's tradition, the stang was like a portable altar. It represents duality in life with the stangs and it, may, it represents the old horny um, as well as the world tree. However, one thing that was prevalent in their tradition, and you'll see in the picture in the post, is the crossed arrows and garland. Now, that was the cross arrows represents the dual um, duality in life um, as good and bad, negative, positive, that sort of thing, dark light. But it also mostly it represents what most people of modern traditional witchcraft as the battle between the two kings, the king of summer, the king of winter, or the queen of winter, or the queen of um, summer. And the arrows represent that battle, that conflict, and the coinciding of each quarter of, you know, summer and winter, autumn and spring. Um, and the garlands are, the garland is, represents the circle of life, naturally. And it is decorated seat, lot from the seasonal fauna and flora. Uh, so for example, like in the season now, it would be decorated with ivy and holly. And mistletoe, the holly and the ivy. Sorry, I love. It's probably the only Christmas song I like, and it's probably one of the oldest. If you ignore the um, the the little Christian bit that's plopped at the end, which you can clearly see, it's just popped in there. Um, but yeah, um, and it's decorated seasonally. Um, but it again, like the stang has sort of evolved and changed and people have different ideas of what the stang is today, which is brilliant. You know, it's that's what all folk magic's about. Um, I myself and not I don't class myself as a traditional witch. I just call myself a folk practitioner. However, there is element because I was into traditional witchcraft many years ago, um, there's still elements that still make sense to me and one of them is using the stang. Um, and for example I I, I really rarely use tools i just use things that are around me but the tools that i do use um have heavy significance to me so the stand that i have i have another one which is at the top which i'm not prepared to show but i'm prepared to show this one because she's the most oldest and she can look after herself this was my first ever stand um it was an ash tree which was grown half between a bridge and half out um, and to me represents duality in itself because of that formation of half in half out one side is quite light and the other side is quite dark so you can't really see it because it's quite light um light out but you see light and dark and also if you look at the branches one sticks the other way one sticks the up out like so it's duality to me um i also have the horn serpent on it um, which will be a tattoo soon. Um, and on various other symbology, which is personal to me in my practice, um, and very much to me, the stang represents duality in life, light and dark, um, negative, positive, um, as well as the Axis Monday, the, the world tree, um, and being ash, being represented in your gas cell. Sorry, I don't know if I'm saying that right. I'm not very good with Norse. Um, the world tree or um, the bile in in Irish, you know, the, the which is the mighty oak, um, which doesn't really go into much detail like uh, the Norse sagas, but there is reference to the bile um, being the same way um, of being the mighty oak that the ancestors, um, carries the ancestors and bridges the worlds. So the act of bringing a stang and you um, plunging it into the ground, um, a lot of people will do a compass round. I um, 
do something called a cane. And a cane is um, in Scottish tradition where it's more about like a portable um, protection that wherever you go, you've got this ring of protection around you. Um, but when they do a compass around, they will then plunge it into the centre of the compass. And that bridges the worlds of the living and the dead, the, the worlds above, below and all betwixt. Um, and that's what I use as well, except for the compass round. Um, I'm very simplistic in the way I work. Um, so a lot of times I will just kind of like, like, cause when I, uh, <laughs> what's brilliant about the formation as well is that when I fling it around, oh, <laughs> fling it around my head, um, clockwise or anti-clockwise, it makes a, a whirling sound, sort of like a ball roar. And then I plant it into the ground. And I ask for the spirits above, below, and up between, or earth, sea, and sky. And the Trinity as well, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, because I am a folk practitioner, so, and an animist, so I will utilise any kind of spirits, or um, work with any spirits that are in an area. They, they're Christian, pagan, Muslim, Jew, um, Jew, Jewish. Um, I'll work with them, because spirits are spirits, and like our neighbours, we are diverse. We have diversity. So, yeah, whatever. Um, not whatever, but, yeah, um, so on forth. Um, but other things that can be used for the sang, which are in um, folk magic, is something that's called, which Session Williamson talks in the museum, it's called the talking stick, and where you get a forked pitch, um and rest upon your eyelids, planted into the ground, and you can see spirits of the earth. For me, it's too wide, but it's purple, perfect my temples and to rest my head on and I just concentrate I plunge into the ground I ask for the spirits to appear to me and I concentrate and I see through my mind's eye and then the spirits will appear to me with great pleasing and evocation um, also which is brilliant so because of this you can make perfect circles into dirt so you just basically plant one side of it firmly and then circle it around like this you make perfect circles and um, for sigils on the ground um it, it it's good for divining as well like the divine rod which i've used before um there's so many um things that the forked stick or the stand can be used um i put in a post recently from um the grand grimoire the, the red dragon uh, how to procure a, a wand that is forked um which you can go and read as well but um yeah like it, it's quite a special thing um and most branches will fork off it's it's their natural ability to to fork off to fork off um and even roots you know um mandrake roots or um British mandrake, white briny, like they, they naturally fork off and depends, and even more so if there's like rocks in the soil because it trains the roots to go up. Um, but it, 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 I think to our forebearers, this is the, they've seen it as a, um, not only an embedment of ourselves, of legs and arms and whatnot and torso, but also the, the, the representation of duality, you know, the sun, the moon, the, the night, the day, the, the negative, positive. And with a folk practitioner, we pretty much work with the, the natural forces around us. And the natural forces are, are neutral, but yet not in at the same time. And it's us, it all depends on us, the practitioner, in way, what route we take with that, um, with our folk magic. Um, so it, it, it's handy to have a tool that has that sort of dual powers within it, duality. But yeah, so that's just a little um, sort of intro into the stang slash forked stick or forked staff, whatever you like to call it. Um, but yeah, so um, my video on how to make a antler top stang slash staff will be coming up soon. Um, so keep your eyes peeled and I hope you enjoy it. Slanchevac.